Songs of Two by Arthur S. Hardy Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Songs of Two One Last night I dreamed this dream, that I was dead, and as I slept, forgot of man and God, that other dreamless sleep of rest, I heard a footstep on the sod, as of one passing overhead, and lo thou dear, didst touch me on the breast, saying, What shall I write against thy name, that men should see? Then quick the answer came, I was beloved of thee. 2. Dear giver of thyself when at thy side, I see the path beyond divide, where we must walk alone a little space. I say, now am I strong indeed to wait with only memory a while, content until I see thy face. Yet turn as one in sorest need to ask once more thy giving grace. So at the last of all our partings, when the night has hidden from my failing sight the comfort of thy smile, my hand shall seek thine own to hold it fast, nor wilt thou think for this the heart and great, less glad for all its past, less strong to bear the utmost of its fate. 3. As once through forest shade I went, I heard a flower call and bent, and strove to go, should love not spare. Nay, dearest, this is love's sweet share of selfishness, for which is best, to die alone or on thy breast? If thou hast heard my call, take fearlessly, thou art my guest, to give is all. Hush, O oh love, thou casuist. 4. Ask me not why, I only know. It were thy loss if I could show thee cause as for a lesser thing. Remember how we searched the spring, but found no source. So clear the sky within its earth-bound depths did lie. Give to thy joy its wings, and to thy heart its song. Nor try with questionings the throbbing throat that sings. 5. For in thy clear and steadfast eyes, thine own self-wonder deepest lies, nor any words that lips can teach are sweeter than their wonder speech. And when thou givest them to me, through dawns of tenderness I see, as in the water sky the sun of certainty appear. So ask me why, for then thou knowest, dear. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Songs of Two by Arthur S. Hardy Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Songs of Two Six To give is more than to receive, men say. But thou hast made them one. What if, some day, men bade me render back the gifts I cannot pay? Since all were undeserved, should I obey? Lo, all these years of giving... When we try to own our thanks, we hear the giver cry, Nay, it was thou who givest, dear, not I. If wisdom smile, let wisdom go. All things above, this is the truest, That we know because we love, not love because we know. 7. Let it not grieve thee, dear, that love is sad, Who, changeless, Lovest so the things that change, The morning in thine eyes, The dusk within thy hair. Were it not strange if he were glad Who cannot keep thy heart from care, Or shelter from the whip of pain The bosom where his head hath lain? Poor sentinel that may not guard The door that love itself unbarred, Who in the sweetness of his service Knows its incompleteness, and while he sings of life eternal, feels the coldness of death's wings. 8. Stoop with me, dearest, to the grass, one little moment ere we pass, 
from out these parched and thirsty lands see all these tiny blades are hands stretched supplicating to the sky and listen dearest patiently dost thou not hear them move the myriad roots that search and cry as hearts do love feed us or let us die nine beloved when far up the mountain side we found almost at eventide our spring how far we did fear lest it should dare the trackless wood and disappear and lost all heart when on the crest we stood and saw it spent in mist below yet ever sure was its flow and ever gathering to its own new springs of which we had not known to fair meadows swept exultant from the woodland shadows and when at last upon the baffling plain we thought it scattered like a raveled skein low tranquil free it's longed for home the wide unfathomable sea ten thy names are like sweet flowers that grow within a garden where i go sometimes at dawn to see each one lift its head proudly in the sun sometimes at night when only by the fragrant air i know them there and none are grieved or think i slight their worth if closest to my breast this one i take which holds within its own each single fragrance of the rest my friend my friend and as i loved it first alone so shall i love it to the end for none were half so dear were it not best and a poem this recording is in the public domain Songs of Two by Arthur S. Hardy Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Songs of Two Eleven My every purpose fashioned by some thought of thee, Though as a feather's weight that shapes the arrow's flight it be, No single joy complete in which thou hast no fee, Thou thy share be the star in mine its shadow in the sea, thy very pulse my pulse thy every prayer my prayer thy love my blue or reaching sky that bounds me everywhere yet free beloved free for this encircling air i cannot leave behind doth but love's boundlessness declare twelve last night the angel of remembrance brought me while i slept think dear of all his store just that one memory i thought banished forever from our door thy sob of pain when once i heard thee sure then in my dream i suddenly was ware of god above me saying reach thy hand to me in prayer and i will give thee pardon yet thou nay she hath forgiven teach her to forget thirteen love me not dearest for the smile the tender greeting or the while by which unconscious of its road my soul seeks thine in its abode nor say i love thee of thine eyes for when death shuts them where the skies but love me for my love then am i safe from all surprise and thou above the loss of all that dies Fourteen dear hands forgiving hands there is no speech so sure as thing lips falter with so much to tell eyes fill with thoughts i scarce divine but thy least touch soul understands dear giving taking hands there are no gifts so free as thine one last gem from the heart of the mine one last cup from the veins of the vine from the rose to the wind one last sweet breath then poverty and death but thy dear palms are riches empty asking alms fifteen a little moment at the end of day left over in the candle light on the shore of dreams on the edge of sleep too small to throw away too poor to keep but it holds two words for thee dear friend good night good night 
and so this remnant of the day left over in the candlelight on the shore of dreams on the edge of sleep becomes too great to throw away too dear to keep and a poem this recording is in the public domain songs of two by arthur s hardy read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Songs of Two. Sixteen. Beloved, when I read some fine conceit, wherein are wrought as in glass the features love hath made so sweet, I marvel at so bold an art, seeing thou art too dear to praise upon the highway where men pass. For when I seek to tell the ways God's hand of tenderness hath touched thine earthly part again i hear thy first own cry of happiness and sweetest of god sounds the dear remonstrance of thy giving heart and cannot speak seventeen across the plain of time i saw them marching all night long the endless throng of all who ever dared to fight with wrong all the blood of their hearts the prime and crown of their fleeting years all the toil of their hands the tears of their eyes the thought of their brain for a word from the lips of truth for a glimpse of the scroll of fate ere love and youth were spent in vain and even truth too late oh when the silence speaks and the scroll unrolls to the eye of the soul what will it be that shall pay the cost of the pain gone waste and the labor lost and then dear waking i saw you and knew eighteen we thought when love at last should come the rose would lose its thorn in every lip but joys be dumb when love sweet love was born that never tears should start to rise no night or take our morn nor any guest of grief surprise when love sweet love was born and when he came o oh heart of mine and stood within our door no joy our dreaming could divine was missing from his store the thorn shall wound our hearts again but not the fear of yore for all the guest of grief and pain shall serve him evermore nineteen dost thou remember dear the day we met in those bare woods of may each had a secret unconfessed each sound a promise in each nest young wings a tremble for the air how we joined hands not knowing where the springs that touch set free should find their sea speechless so sure we were to share the unknown good to be twenty the woods are bare again there are no secrets now the buds a scar no promises this is the end ah dearest i have seen thee bend above thy flowers as one who knew the dying wood should bloom anew come let us sleep perchance god's countenance like thine above thy flowers smiles through the night upon us too and a poem this recording is in the public domain verses my friend by arthur s hardy read for librivox dot org by larry wilson i have a friend who came i know not how nor he among the crowd apart i feel the pressure of his hand and hear in very truth the beating of his heart my soul had shut the door of abode so poor it seemed for any guest to tarry there a night until he came asking not entertainment only rest our hands were empty his and mine alike he says until they joined i see the gifts he brought but where were mine that he should say i too have need of thee without the threshold of his heart i wait abashed 
afraid to enter where so radiant a company do meet yet enter boldly knowing i am there whether his hand shall press my latch to-night to-morrow matters not he came unsummoned he will come again and i though dead shall answer to my name and yet dear friend in whom i rest content speak to me now lest when we meet where tears and hunger have no grace a little word of friendship be less sweet end of poem this recording is in the public domain by arthur s hardy read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson the dew was full of sun that morn oh i heard the doves in the lady rick's coop as he crossed the meadows beyond the corn watching his falcon in the blue how could he hear my song so far the song of the blood where the pulses are straight through the fields he came to me oh i saw his soul as i saw the dew but i hid my joy that he might not see i hid it deep within my breast as the starling hides in the maze her nest back through the corn he turned again oh little he cared where his falcon flew and my heart lay still in the hand of pain as in winter's hand the rivers do how could he hear its secret cry the cry of the dove when the comers die thrice in the maze he turned to me oh i saw his soul as i saw the dew but i hid my pain that he might not see i hid it deep as the grave is made where the heart that can ache no more is laid last night where grows the river grass oh the stream was dark though the moon was new i saw white death with my lover pass side by side as the troopers so give me said death thy purse well filled and thy mantle clasp which the moonbeams gild save the heart which beats for thy dear sake oh i saw my heart as i saw the dew all life has given is death's to take dear god how can i love thy day if thou takest the heart that loves away end of poem this recording is in the public domain Eiter Supremum by Arthur S. Hardy Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Oh, what a night for a soul to go! The wind a hawk, and the fields in snow. No screening cover of leaves in the wood, Nor a star abroad the way to show. Do they part in peace, soul with its clay? Tenant and landlord, what do they say? was it sigh of sorrow or of release i heard just now as the face turned gray what if aghast on the shoreless main of eternity it sought again the shelter and rest of the isle of time and knocked at the door of its house of pain on the tavern hearth the embers glow the laugh is deep and the flagons low but without the wind and the trackless sky and night at the gates where a soul would go. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. On the Fly Leaf of the Rubiot by Arthur S. Hardy. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Deem not this book a creed. Tis but the cry of one who fears not death, yet would not die who at the table feigns with a sorry jest to love the wine the master's hand has pressed the while he loves the absent master best the bitter cry of love for love's reply end of poem this recording is in the public domain in an album by arthur s hardy read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson like the south flying swallow the summer has flown like a fast falling star from unknown to unknown life flashes and falters and fails from our sight good night friends good night 
like homecoming swallows that seek the old eaves like the buds that wait patient beneath the dead leaves love shall sleep in our hearts till our hands meet again till then friends till then end of poem this recording is in the public domain With April Arbutus to a Friend by Arthur S. Hardy Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Fairer than we, the woods of May, Yet sweeter blossoms do not grow Than these we send you from our snow. Cramped are their stems by winter's cold, And stained their leaves with last year's mold. For these are flowers which fought their way Through ice and cold in sun and air, With all a soul might do and dare. Hope that outlives a world's decay, Enduring faith that will not die, And love that gives not knowing why. Therefore we send them unto you, And if they are not all your due, Once they have looked into your face, Your graciousness will give them place. You know they were not born to bloom Like roses in a crowded room. For though courageous they are shy, Loving but one sweet hand and eye, ah should you take them to the rest the warmth the shelter of your breast since on the bleak and frozen bosom of our snows they dared to smile on yours who knows but that they might not dare to speak in the poem this recording is in the public domain immortality by arthur s hardy read for librivox dot org by larry wilson my window is the open sky the flower in farthest wood is mine i am the heir to all gone by the eldest son of all the line and when the robbers time and death athwart my path conspiring stand i cheat them with a clod a breath and pass the sword from hand to hand end of poem this recording is in the public domain. J. E. B. by Arthur S. Hardy Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Not all the pageant of the setting sun Should yield the tired eyes of man delight. No sweet beguiling power had stars at night To soothe his fainting heart when day is done nor any secret voice of venison might nature own, were not each sound and sight the sign and symbol of the infinite, the prophecy of things not yet begun. So had these lips, so early sealed with sleep, no fruitful word, life no power to move our deeper reverence, did we not see how more than all he said he was, how deep below this broken life he ever wove the finer substance of a life to be. In the poem. This recording is in the public domain. By a Grave by Arthur S. Hardy. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Oft I have stood within the carven door of some cathedral at the close of the day, and seen its softened splendors fade away from loosened pane and tessellated floor as if a parting guest who comes no more till over all silence and blackness lay then rose sweet murmurings of them that pray and shone the altar lamps unseen before so dear as here i stand with thee alone the voices of the world sound faint and far the glare and glory of the moon grow dim and in the stillness what i had not known i know a light pure shining as a star, a song uprising like a holy hymn. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Duality by Arthur S. Hardy Read for LibriVox.org by Laurie Wilson Within me are two souls that pity each the other for the ends they seek yet smile forgiveness as two friends that love the while the folly against which each feigns to preach and while one barters in the market-place 
or drains the cup before the tavern fire the other winged with a divine desire searches the solitary wastes of space and if o'ercome with pleasure this one sleeps the other steals away to lay its ear upon some lip just cold perchance to hear those wondrous secrets which it knows and keeps end of poem this recording is in the public domain Lullaby by Arthur S. Hardy, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. O oh, Mary, Mother, if the day we trod in converse sweet, the lily fields of God, from earth afar arose a cry of pain, would we not weep again? Sings, hush, hush, O oh baby mine, mothers twain are surely thine, one of earth and one divine. O Mary Mother, if the day the air was sweet with songs celestial, came a prayer from earth afar and mingled with the strain, would we not pray again? Sings, Sleep, sleep, my baby dear, mothers twain are surely near, one to pray and one to hear. O Mary Mother, if as yesternight a bird sought shelter at my casement light, a wounded soul should flutter to thy breast, wouldst thou refuse it rest sings sleep darling peacefully mary mother comforts me christ her son hath died for thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain end of songs of two by arthur s hardy